Hello, welcome to Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We started a conversation with Air Marshal Ashley Larson um, in our last episode. And on this occasion, we are here to continue with this conversation. Now he's going to take us into the real process that converted him from a regular army into the Air Force and matters that uh, occurred later. So we are here. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Um, and we also have Wing Commander Patrick Sogwajo here. He's had one episode on himself, very interesting. Um, but he also fits into the storyline, um, and that's the reason he's here with us. So, sir, so when you started working, and I'm talking about working proper in Ghana, sir. you start. You, you you did say that you were you were you were at the artillery. Session. Yes, I yeah. started. I was trained as an artillery officer, mm -hmm. and when I came back, I joined the artillery unit, which was mm -hmm. then based behind the so artillery. Stadium. Is what again? Guns, gun, uh -huh. heavy guns, heavy firing guns. heavy, uh -huh. heavy, heavy guns. You know, right. twenty-five the guns you have for the parade. Are boom, for. boom. Yeah. Those are all artillery <laughs> guns. You know. okay. okay, so you worked so there for a bit. There, then, then Nkrumah decided to replace the, the guns with the Reki armored car uh, 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 regiment. You know. We had to use the armored car. In fact, then the armored cars were not in. We were using Land Rovers, and we mounted machine guns on them. On we them, were, yeah. And, then, they, and you uh, had the armored cars. The armored car thing was introduced, and then the build the Gonda barracks. Where did they bring from? From Britain. Okay. Saladins, Saladins and Ferrets. Saladins and uh, Ferrets. Uh -huh. And, the, and what, which is the other one? Ferret. Ferrets. Ferrets. Mm, okay. you know, they all came from Britain, and then. But so, then, and so, then we moved sorry, from, from. Pardon my ignorance, but yeah. armored car will be. The one that you only see the head of the, the person the man driving. Outside, yes. So what are the other people doing inside? They the are the driver is there, the gunner is in. But is there lights inside or is that? Oh yes, there's lights. Oh, they can see all they the instruments. Hey, you before. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the tanks. Just like the tanks. And are firing the commander you see will go down. The uh -huh. only difference is that they have tires. They okay. have tires. So they, it goes and it's covered. Wow. And no priests like sitting in a hall and they're all pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how long were you there? So I was in artillery when the change came and okay. then they decided to build the Gonda barracks. Okay. So that was our barracks. So they moved, we closed down the, the artillery, artillery and then I moved to Gonda barracks. Mm -hmm. The barracks was built along, on the other side of the road was Arakan barracks. Mm -hmm. And then, but we didn't have a mess, so we, the officers, of the uh, 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 Amot Squad um, Regiment, we were sharing the same mess with the 5th Battalion officers. In other mm -hmm. words, we were using the 5th Battalion mess. Mm -hmm. And so that was where I was. And um, that was where I met people like Achiampong. I met Charles Bosole, who later on joined the Bosole. Air Force with me. Okay. Aminutu was there. Mm -hmm. um, some other officers. I, Achiampong, I said I met there. Yeah. Also was there. So, so Achampo, you met him at the at the Gonda Barracks, is that correct? Or he was an Arakan. He was an Arakan. Yeah. Yes. And um, was he same rank as yourself? Yeah, we were then lieutenants. He was a short service commission officer. Okay. In other words, he came in. He was, I think, he was a corporal, and then no, he didn't get to sergeant. He was a corporal, and then they found him very bright and whatnot, and decided to send him to. Mons Officer yeah. Cadet School. The months I said we went to do the education exercise. unit. You see? There and was so education teacher in education teacher. unit. Yeah, oh, yeah. I see. So uh, that, that, that was it. And then um, um, he went to Mons, did the three months course, and then was given a commission lieutenant. Right. So he came and came to the infantry now to gain infantry experience. At that time, the second in command of the Arakan of the 5th Battalion was Major Otu. Who mm -hmm. became the first CDS? Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. the, the British officer, a British lieutenant colonel was in charge, and O2 was the second in command. Mm -hmm. There are many other. At the time I'm talking, the percentage of British officers to Ghanaian was 85 to 15. Wow. 85 or 80 to 20. And you are talking now, you are talking near 1960. I'm about. talking of. Uh, 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 yeah, 59 getting into 60, 60 yeah. that sort of thing. Wow. You know, so it was heavily... So what, what, what at the time, 
Kutu Achampo obviously had not been head of state. But what did you know about him? An officer. He was an officer in the mess like me. We were all lieutenants. Was he funny? No, he was a, just a, a nice guy, except that, you know, he had a girlfriend he liked very much in GNTC. Hey. And um, um, oh. he used to, I knew the girl, because we used to oh, meet, girl's used to, name? Oh, I can't remember now, but uh. he lost the girl to Chumbarima. He, he <laughs> quarreled with the girl, and the, Chumbarima came from England and saw the girl and loved him. After that, and that annoyed Aika Champo. <laughs> <laughs> Like your son is uh, going to ask, do you have one too? Me? <laughs> well, I, oh, I had something, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we all had something. That kept life going, you know. Thank you very much. That kept life going in the mess and that sort of thing. Araka so, mess was very nice. Girls liked it. They used to come there. Uh, we girls were to allowed to it. come there? Oh, yes. And that's the provision? Well, well, no, they came, but they would stay in, in the mess. In the okay. front part, they would take tea with you. But those of us who want to be smart managed to smuggle them to other areas, you know. <laughs> but then it was part of life. You can't help it. <laughs> it was one of those things, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> man so tell me, uh, so how did you change from your... You also did recce, right? Yeah, well, now when we moved from... Uh, uh, changed from uh, artillery, artillery, we became recce. So Gonda was recce. Oh, okay. And in recce, I went to the, uh, the first officer was Ado, he left the arm artillery, they promoted him to captain, and in a short time they made him a major, major. when he became the OC of the recce, mm -hmm. and I was the number two. Then after about six months or so, Kojochi Kata and three other officers, one Nyante and one um, um, other officer from um, uh, Winneba, forgotten the name, tall officer, he joined, they all joined to be part of the, the recce. But I started having trouble in, at that time. Mm. I started having trouble. trouble so Winneba is not Nuno Mensah, right? No, Nuno Mensah hadn't joined by then. I think he joined, you much, joined much before later. him, I think so. Nuno Mensah joined much, much later. Oh, I see. Although he went to Sandhurst and whatnot. Yeah, he talks, yeah. He talks fondly about Sandhurst. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, nice. so, so, okay, so. so how did you now convert to the Air Force? Well, I left the reconnaissance squadron. I was there, but I was then transferred to the first battalion of infantry. And the reason for my leaving, I had a problem with General Otu, who was the two IC of the place there. Mm -hmm. A very funny problem, which I can, I, that that made me to be very very difficult and to say it, it was a do and die thing for me from then on until I got into the Air Force. I got it. Because we used to have what you call tactical exercises with our troops. You go out in the bush, a senior British major will be examining, trying to get your intelligence on what you know about military tactics and whatnot. And he asked the question, what is the range of the three inch mortar? There was a British lieutenant who said it's 1,800 meters. So I challenged him. I said, you are wrong. It's 2,200 meters. But the British major didn't believe me. He took the word of the British lieutenant. So I walked up to him, sir. I fired this weapon in the school of artillery. I was there for six months. And the thing is 1,000. 2,000, uh, 2000 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. He didn't mind me. So when we went back to barracks after the exercise, he went to report me to Otu, who was the two IC. And Otu never had the patience to, in, to find out what was wrong. He called me in, and he washed me down. Even Omo couldn't wash me that clean. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm not going to tolerate any of you officers challenging the British officers here. They've been sent here to train us, so I don't, I wouldn't accept it. So before I left, I saluted him and said, sir, with your kind permission, I would like us to send a text to the British office, in war office in England, for them to tell us what the range of the three inch mortars. So they agreed. They sent the text, the answer came back the next day, I was right. Mm. So what did you never do? called me back. <laughs> 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 
Till he died. I'm telling you, this is serious for me. Till he died as a general. You know, but the British major and the lieutenant came to the mess and said they were very sorry. I said, it's all right. Wow. And after that incident, my life in the armed forces started changing. They moved me out of the Arakan mess. Moved me out of there. I was still in Reiki to go and stay in defense mess. I moved from the 3rd Battalion mess to go to defense mess in Bema camp. And not quite two months there, they chased me that I was owing a mess bill of two pounds in the O2's mess. And so I haven't paid it, and they put me before the brigadier in charge, the British brigadier in charge. The intention being that probably they will kick me out of, of the, the, army. Um, the army. Fortunately for me, the brigade major at that time in the brigade was Major Bauer. So Bauer called me. You know, Bauer has been to Sandhurst himself. He called me and said, what is all this? I said, this is the situation. I, 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 I'm owing a two pounds mail bill, but it's within the month. In other words, he would tell you, if the month ends January to February, start of February, in that time, the mail bill can be over. At the end, you must pay it. And mine was in the middle. But because they've kicked me out, they thought they would take me to the... So I went before the brigadier. I went with Bawa, Bawa was there. The brigadier washed me down. I'm, I mean, so, you are a disgrace, you are this, you are that. Yeah, so, what have you got to say? I started asking, so I took the mess bill out. I had it. I also thought that should be difficult. <laughs> I took it out, gave it to Bawa. Bawa gave it to the brigadier. He saw it and found that I had paid the bill. So he told Bawa, um, uh, Charles, what's happening? Why? So he immediately said, Ashley Larson, I'm sorry, you can fall out. So I saluted and walked out. Mm. Wow. You know. <laughs> and then, so, so? It was after that, mm -hmm. not quite a month, after that whole incident, I found that they, want, they, they are transferring me to the 1st Battalion in Takoradi. Okay. So and the Takoradi 1st Battalion was what? Was okay, also uh, infantry. Uh, infantry, okay. But the two ICDR was at the Ankara, the man who became head of state. Head of state, uh, Ankara. Yeah. At this time, we were, we, 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 there were a few British officers in the system then. Mm -hmm. And the, that was commanded, even, even in Accra, it was commanded by, by. The British. It was later on when I left that somebody came to tell me that, mm -hmm. do you know why O2 and whatnot got you out of that place? There was this incident in which the officer commanding the battalion in which O2 was the 2IC was going on leave in the UK and they asked O2 who is the 2IC to take over the battalion. He refused. He, we young Ghanaian, we felt bad. You know, he refused. And um, at what happened was that day in the mess there were some British officers Myself, Kojo Chikata, um, Nyante, I think Ike too was there. Kojo was in the bar holding his mug of beer. Big, big. So when <laughs> this officer, Ghanaian, I don't know who came, I said, Do you know that uh, Major Otu refused to accept the job of uh, battalion commander when he did twice? It. Kojo Chikata released his beer, the big mug on the ground, hard ground, bow! Kojo is a troublesome boy. <laughs> 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 it is scattered. So this, some of these boys saw it, I think they went to tell O2. The first thing they asked, because I was senior to all of them, they all left and it was Ashley Larson there, they said yes. So I was moved to the first battalion mm. in Takuradi. When I moved there, I stayed there, and Ankara was the two IC. There were other officers there, Carter, you must have heard of Carter. Of course, really Carter, yeah. um, Even then, Bawatu had been sent over there and many others. It was there that I was as OC HQ company when Nkrumah decided to form the Air Force. Okay. And they said they would like some young lieutenants who would like it to apply. So I said, I went through my team and said, look, the way things are going for me in the army, I better move out and go into the Air Force. So I applied. There were about six, seven of us from the battalion that time who applied to go into the Air Force. 
And when the, our names were sent to Arthur, who is the two IC, he became mad. Which, I wonder, which uh, Arthur is this? Ankara, I beg your pardon. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, he, he, he became mad. I understand. I appreciated his mind because how could you let six officers from your unit all leave you straight away to go? I saw his point. So he called us all in. And you know, Ankara is a real bully. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know. Ankara says he's giving us six hours to withdraw all our applications. Wow. <laughs> Of course, the other officers had been there before me. They are already in the unit. I'm new. They all withdrew their applications. I didn't. I said I had made up my mind that I wanted it. So he called me in. I said, Larson, did you receive my message? I said, yes, I did. Why didn't you withdraw your I said, because I want to try to take my chances. Try my you started to get out of my office. You know, the way he was wild and whatnot. Unfortunately for him, the commanding officer, the British man, was passing then and heard it and came and said, Arthur, what's wrong here? Yeah, I saw this young lieutenant just coming because the Air Force didn't come. They want to rise quickly to be general. I remember the comment, you know, and so said they want to be blah, blah, blah. So, so Colonel Anderson, that was him. It was a crack Colonel. He used to command the Gekas during the war. Mm. The Gekas are these short, short people in India not, who could fight like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, Ankara, Joe, uh, uh, Arthur Joe, Joseph Ankara, let me, let me try him, let me exam, in, in, interview him. So I went into his office, he had interview, I explained what I wanted to do, but he was very, very, very accommodating. He says, yes, Ashley, I know you are new here, not quite two months, so you haven't got to know how the battalion is working and whatnot. And I understand your feelings. So I'm going to allow you to try to go and see whether you can get into the Air Force or not. But if you fail, you are coming back to the battalion. I said, yes, sir. So I started and went. And I went and came to Accra for the time, and I passed. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so you passed the, the entry um, interview to be part of so, so it means that you were the pioneers of that. We were many officers who went. We were about 10, 11. Mm -hmm. Two of us passed. Myself and Bosolet. You must have seen Bosolet, yeah. Bosolet passed. So he was then in 3rd Battalion. Mm -hmm. He was then in 3rd Battalion. Mm -hmm. So we passed. And so then you get we had to, I came back and um, So what was the training like? To, to what? To join Air the Air Force? Force? No, Air oh, Force training. Oh, it was tough. When we joined the Air Force, the cadets who were before us, they were already in the ground school stage. The ground school stage was to tell you how an aircraft fly, everything about aircraft, the, the book size of it, you know. So we joined, and then we later on did our flying and whatnot. I was very sorry. All that, in Ghana. All in Ghana. The initial one, that was when we had Sako dies. The grading. The, 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 the grading. The Israelis were teaching us how to fly. The, we were flying Indian built aircrafts, but the headquarters of the Air Force, I'll show you the team of that, the air, mm -hmm. the, that Indian yeah. Air Commodore was the head of the Air Force. That was it. And so when we finished that thing, we got our wings. Nkrumah came to give the officers their wings, everybody. And after that, the first batch, the first 10 of us, we were sent to England to do advanced flying. So it's still. Air Marshal Ashley Larson here and um, talking about his entry into the Air Force now. We'll take a short break and then when we come back, we'll now look at the appointments that he had when he now became a full Air Force officer. This is Footprint. We'll be right back. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast, and sometimes it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV, it's your world.
welcome back. This is Footprint with Air Marshal Ashley Larson here and Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo. When you finished everything and you came to start work as an Air Force officer, where did you start from? I started from the uh, uh, Takorani, where okay. you know I got my wings, came back. I, mean, I got my wings before going, but I came back and then was based because now we started forming the squadrons. Okay. We started forming. We started with the uh, uh, number one squadron, um, which had beavers and otters. You wouldn't know this aircraft. No, no, In no. fact, Bosolea and myself we helped to fly two beavers from England after our course in flying in England, two beavers were brought in from Canada and they brought them to where we were and we helped the two British pilots to fly them from UK all the way to Accra. Mm. You know, in those days, yeah. we, we did that. It was the first right. experience we had. So yeah. how did you progress within the ranks of the Air Force? Well, I had to do everything that all the cadets were doing. If anything, I suppose the advantage on my side was I was already an officer. I'd had a good officer training at Sandhurst, and in fact, they were expecting us to be imparting some of the knowledge to these other guys coming. And that was the reason why I think Nkuma wanted to get some experienced officers also to come and learn to fly. And mm -hmm. I think that objective was achieved. Okay. So, but I trained, I did all the training and whatnot, and I, I think it would be unfair for me to say that the fact that I was ahead already wasn't an advantage, it was an advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. It, it was be. an advantage. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I ended up in the Caribou Squadron. I went to Canada with some other officers to fly two Caribous. The Caribou takes about 30 to 40 people. It's a big two-wing thing. We flew them from Toronto all the way to about 10 days flying to come. You know, I have to do two of them. But in the end, when we got all eight in, after two years or so, two, three years, I became the squadron commander of that squadron. Okay. And Charles Bosley became the squadron commander of one squadron okay. flying the otters and the beavers. You know. mm -hmm. When did Gary join? The Air no, Force? Yes, about so. Well, I want to tell you, I helped him to come into the Air Force. That's, That's Jerry Force. Rollins. Jerry Rollins. How so? He was living with an American friend of mine called Jimmy Wilson. Wilson. Jimmy Wilson. He must have heard he, of him. He, yeah, he was very right. popular. That's it. He was, he was gay. And Jimmy yes. Wilson was, yeah, he had about four or five boys like Jerry too. Of the half, all of them, their parents have Ghanaian, have Bruni or Lebanese. Mm. And Jerry was one yeah. of them. And Jimmy Wilson had, I think, those other ones to go to the States. But Jerry wanted to join the Air Force or join the Empire, but he had made attempts two or three times and didn't succeed. So Mr. Wilson came up to me to say, look, I have this young man, he wants to join. What can you do? So I told him, look, let's go and find the examination, past examination papers to go into the military academy. So I went for three years of those papers, collected them, gave it to Mr. Wilson to give to Jerry and ask him to go through all those papers and then do the exam again. He did and he passed. Wow. But when he passed, he said, well, the man who helped me is Air Force. I want to join. So he joined the Air Force. Oh, so he chose Air Force because of your influence. Well, I was helpful. I don't know whether it was my influence, but I helped yeah. him to get into the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So that, that was how he got into the Air Force. And then these guys, but he joined but before, long before him. Oh, you were. So which year did Jerry join? You remember? You remember it? About 70, 70, 70, 71. Thereabouts, okay. No, no, he joined no, earlier no. than that because soon yeah. afterwards, mm -hmm. I joined Aika Champong. I always remember when he, I was made Air Force Commander. Okay. And I had these officers in the mess. I was thanking them. Were for, you made Air Force Commander under Nkrumah? No. No, Nkrumah had been kicked out. Okay, so at which point were you made Air Force Commander? I was made Air Force Commander in 1968. At that time, who was Ankara the... Ankara was there. So General Ankara, Ankara and Afrifa. Who was there coming after Ankara? Afrifa. Akwesi Afrifa probably after was. After Anzeri Bestor. Yeah, after Anzeri Bestor. So, and um, 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 that was when I was made Air, Air, Force, Air, Force, Air, Force, Air Force Commander. And first, sir. I, 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 was, I was the ADC to... Akufuado's father oh. in 69. You know, he was made head of state 69. Head of state and I was the ADC to him. 
Oh, you were the ADC come to, um, to uh, oh, yes. President Akufuado at that oh, time. Yes. I was the ADC, and I worked very well with so him. So you became Air Force Commander before ADC or the, mm -hmm. the other way around? Sir, let me put well, it back. Okay. Air Force Commander. Yeah. Commander, then Base Commander, Commander, but he was ADC before the Base and then the Air Force, Air Force Commander. Commander. At his that rank, he couldn't <coughs> be ADC. Oh, okay. When yeah. he was Fly Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how was it like being an ADC to the then president? He was a very nice man. Uh -huh. I, I, I had no problems with him. If any problems was with his madam. But otherwise, he was a guy who had time for me. Uh -huh. And um, um, I, was, I connected very well with him. Wow. I always remember the occasion when they wanted to install him as the president, the, the rehearsal. KBI Yensus, one state protocol man, tall man, okay, I remember. Okay. KBI Yensus was in there, and we were, we were, rehearsing. We were mm -hmm. rehearsing in the state house. Yeah. Well, that the sword of state, it's a very heavy sword. Have you carried it before? No, no please. <laughs> no, no, please. Very, very heavy. <laughs> and so they passed it on to old man Akufuado to try Hold and it. go to do the ceremony. He nearly went. So I jumped and grabbed it from him immediately. So that he wouldn't fall down. Yeah. You know? So thank you, Ashley. So, 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 so this thing is very sad. So then after the ceremony, he didn't look well. I said, sir, are you OK? He said, no, I'm not feeling well. So would you like me to get the doctor to check? Yeah, I got Brigadier Bando. Mm -hmm. He came and checked him and said, well, look, Mr. President is not feeling well. I think he should take two weeks off. So I got the helicopter, called the station. They sent the helicopter to the state house. Bam, they carried him to Pedroasi. That was where. But I think then Buzia too was coming. Buzia was a prime minister. Prime minister. And it was because of Buzia's thing, Buzia wanted to change me as the Air Force commander. But Otu had then come in as the commander of the Air Force. And Otu says, Ashley Larson, I want you to, he forced me to go and do this Indian course, mm. the course in India. You know, it is, it is so this O2 is different from your it's former O2? He's the younger brother. Mm -hmm. There were two O2s. He's the yes, one, he's the one that. that Nkrumah asked to take over the Air Force later on. Okay. He took the Air Force. So right. So you took over from him? I, 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 I took over from him. Okay. I took over. So but right. At that time, Buzia was doing his house cleaning. Okay. And he was hitting the Airways more. I'm an Airway anyway. But, but I didn't have time for him. So but O2, <laughs> O2 asked me, to take this Indian course just to give myself a breathing space. And I took, so I was the first officer to go to do the Indian course for General Sanova, you know. Okay. So that's when you were um, I was brigadier. I was brigadier then. Okay. We were then using army ranks. Yes, and I went to India and did the course. All right. And then when I finished the course at the end of the year, I had another message from the Minister of Defense that the president had gone to do a brain surgery. Which president? Uh, Akufuado. Akufu yeah. I should join him in London and fly back with him at the end of 71. So I flew to London after I ended my course, met him and the madame in London, and then we got into the aircraft. Dokenu was flying the aircraft that day, VC-10. Yeah, so, the gun was Captain yeah, Dokenu then. So we flew from, Accra, from London to Accra about in the middle of December, third week. That was it. So, after two, three weeks, I said, I want to go and visit the bases to see the Air Force base. Because I was the Air Force commander. Mm -hmm. Bosola was acting for me. Mm -hmm. So I said, this time I've been away for one year. I don't know how my boys were doing. Let me go and see how they were doing. So I went with about seven officers. Pat, where were you then? You were in Takura. Good. So I landed in Takuradi on the 12th. The night of the 13th, the coup took place. I came from made the coup and said, you had appointed me chief of defense. <laughs> no, <laughs> you were on your random visit. Uh, on my official, because I've been away for one year. And, and you I have no idea that there was a coup taking place. I didn't even know where Aika Champon was <laughs> then. Can, can I do an info? Yes, please. please. <laughs> I had been called to a meeting at Tema. Where well, I met a champion, Agbo, and Salome, and Ba. Yeah, Major Ba. 
Yeah. 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 This was the, the time they were planning the coup. And the reason why they called me, they wanted me to go to Takrati, who had a caribou there. And if Accra <coughs> soldiers refused, or they did the uprising, then the place in Takrat will fly to Kumasi or Tamale and bring in troops. troops. So my job was to soften the pilots. The evening I arrived, they were not smart. I didn't stay in a mess. I went to Atlantic Hotel <laughs> and invited the top one, Joe Bruce and his company, we had dinner and we chatted. And I drew them to attention how the government was handling the armed forces. Muzia was not too kind to the armed forces. And they all agreed that something must, must change. It was the morning after the dinner that I met him. He didn't even know I was in Takrad. I met him at the Air Force base when he was doing his inspection. His inspection. As the Air Force commander. Yes. Then I, the I, I news came that there was a coup. Cool. Ooh. I had been given the code sign, but I had not told anyone. So after his inspection, he had to come back to Accra to assume his position as the Air Force commander. So you heard it on radio that... Yes, the morning we were there, yes. So on our way back to Accra, you know, we fly at the seven heights. The one you are getting close. So when we go to Winneba, we called Accra that we were coming in. And Accra said, we should wait. We came What's back. on the aircraft? I was with him. I was there. I was with all my... I went with about seven officers yes. to go to... I was and him. you were flying? I was. No. Okay, all right. I was sitting by. Mm -hmm. So I was telling... I did a co pilot for Pumpuni. Mm, that's yeah. it. Pumpuni yeah, I did a co pilot for Pumpuni. So I was in the cockpit to Pumpuni. So I was talking to Accra. And Accra came back and said, you can't land here. So I told Pumpuni to keep descending. I, apart, why I was just like, you guys continue. So we asked for a second time, and they said, could not give the code. Then they said, hold on. So they came back and said, you are cleared to land. <laughs> so that time he was wondering, how did I <laughs> get the yes, code? Yes. For us to come and land. <coughs> yes, I was wondering. I didn't know. You know, they didn't buy a new. Yeah. But at that stage, like I said in my first one, staging a coup may be easy. But if you fail, they will kill you. They will kill. Yeah. So your mouth. Got it. You should know where to talk. Where you should. <laughs> so people thought he knew about the coup, but he didn't. Oh, okay. He was in tack riding when the coup happened. So now when you landed back in Accra. Yes. How long did it take for them to appoint you CDA? It wasn't. Ah, because okay. It was a commander air force. He had made the announcement even before I landed. He landed. Wow. Because he called them. Um, John Banner was yes. the CEO. Yes. John Banner. So I got. I spoke to him through the telephone there. You know, I uh, got to say hi. I said, Yakoboski, we have a funny name. Yakoboski, Russian name. Of an actor. He said, Yakoboski, Yakoboski, you know, how is it going? He said, well, I've done it. I've made the coup. Buzia has kicked out, the government is out, I've closed parliament and whatnot. So I've appointed you the CDS and when you come, you come and see me and then we'll, I say, okay, I'm coming at five in the evening, be available for me to see you. Okay, he came again, Jakubowski, we swim together or we drown together. And that was the last statement. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a new yeah. this I catch you, excited. I landed, of course, I went to look for him. It was interesting, I remember that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get out of the aircraft. They were afraid to get out. Because <laughs> I was in the aircraft, their boss. For them to come, I was. So I said, what did you guys join the army for? Well, <laughs> come on, get out. <laughs> so they reluctantly came out of the airport, aircraft and stayed near the aircraft. Then I came out and walked out. And there was this private soldier with his gun standing. I walked to him. And when I came near him, he was just there. I said, private, what do you do when you see a senior officer? He said, salute. I said, come on, wake up. So he saluted immediately. I said, now take me to show me who your was. So he took me there, and then these officers, then they were saved. They went back, they took me to, to, to where I could find Aikachampo. I couldn't find him. The guy was afraid and hiding. 
A it wasn't there. It was staying in the house of one Mr. Latte. Dan Latte. I think Dan the son is Dan Latte. Yes. The, the popular Dan Latte. Mm. D'accord, though. So I couldn't find it. I spent about two, three hours, came back to my house. But meanwhile, I, conduct, I consulted Deku, I consulted Harley, I consulted then my wife. They all said, oh, try and take this. The last person, as I was telling about, I called was Justice Apalu. In fact, he came looking for me. And Justice Apalu said, look, General, I know why you don't want to bet. The people that have made this school, I, a Lieutenant Kenner, then Major Selome, Agbo Selome, Ba Selome, uh, Ba, uh, uh, Major Selome, Agbo Major, then Ba Major, who is going to respect them in Ghana? So I'm asking you as a brigadier to do, to take the appointment and see how we will manage it. That's how I took it. Mm. That's how I took it and became the CDS in this thing. So this will be 72? This was definitely mm. in 72 January. Mm. So 72. And when I met my boss, President Kufuado, he said, meanwhile, Mrs. Akufuado has washed me down. I came to, to, to look for them, you know, we decided that we have to move them out of Pedrasi Lodge, and there are many things to move out. So I said, I don't want to send anybody, I want you yourself to handle it. So I said, let me go and look for them. They were saying, Madina police, not yeah, Madina, not, not, not uh, the, the, the police station that time, um, where? Yeah, Nima. Nima. Nima, that's on an address. So, yes, so I went there to, to, to look for them. That was the madam saying to people that, yes, look, I'm one of the people who, but I, I said, I didn't know. The person who saved me was Brigadier Chumberima. Mm. He's related to them. I said, but how could Ashley be involved when he just came back with the president? So he wasn't the one. Then she turned down. I didn't know where the present president, but maybe he was hiding. Or what, I don't mm. know. <laughs> but I didn't so see you eventually you met Kutua Champong? I have known him. He was an officer. No, no, what I'm saying is that. Yes, I came back. Mm -hmm. And I, even to go to Madame uh, 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 Akufuado, yeah. I had already met him. Okay, okay. I met him, and he said he wanted me to be the CDS and whatnot. I, 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 I sat for about five minutes to say, I have colleagues there. Major Brigadier uh, uh, Aqua, Brigadier Asare, apart from the major who was killed with the judges. But why did he not look at these two people? I'm out of the army. They are still army. But he came and picked an Air Force man to come and be his listen. But he couldn't find any answer. It's just a Jakubowski, you know. <laughs> that word <laughs> is the word we use. It. So eventually I took his job. I went to Bemakam to see him. I took the job. I didn't know what was involved. And before I left his office, he told me, I want to be the chief of I want to be the Minister of Defense. The head of state. He said yes. He, the head of state, wants to be, be defense the minister. minister. Of defense. So I will only take the job of chief of defense up. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, Yakobowski, I hope there will be no clashes between us. We all know our areas and whatnot. So I saluted and left. But was he his rank senior to you? I was my, I was ahead. The man was Lieutenant Colonel. But then, in fact, as I was leaving, it's a, it's a good thing. Had, he said to me, Yakobowski, how long am I going to remain acting colonel? He was made acting colonel. He was acting, he was a substantive lieutenant colonel, but acting colonel. Mm -hmm. He said, how long am I going to remain an okay. acting colonel? I said, Yakubowski, what do you want to do? So you want me to promote you? CDS I was, so I asked for the right papers, gave an order, promotion officers, I K. Achampo promoted lieutenant colonel to full colonel. One, from, I don't know where I put my copy and gave it to them. That's how it became full Kenya. Kind of a champ -on. Champ -on. And then I walked away. Mm. But he was still the minister so of defense. So you promoted him on, on grounds of compassion? Well, the point is that he was already, he should have been, that rank was for brigadier, am I right? Mm, brigadier, yes. brigade commander, but he was doing it as him. Um, he was uh, acting brigade commander. Yeah, he was acting brigade so I Was he a good soldier? I can say I'm not in the army with him, but I can champ -on. He's a clever rat. He's a smart ass. <laughs> Akachamo is a smart ass, you know. You I know. like that. You don't, don't underrate him. He has a lot of common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, he wow. has a lot of common sense. So you were in his government? I was in his government. Mm -hmm. and how did that go? It was tough. Uh, it was tough. Let's take I'm a break. Back. 
Let's take a break and I'll come back to you. Or you want me to go okay. ahead? Okay, we'll take a break. Yes, please, let's take a break. <laughs> we'll take a break let's and when we break. come back, we'll go full speed into that Champa <laughs> era uh, with, with, with sub let's, notes let's from Uncle Pat here. This is Footprint <laughs> with Air Marshal. You know, the, the, Air Force, the, the Air Force ranks and the military keep confusing me. It's so same, it's no, Air no, Marshal no. Ashley Lassen. Okay. We'll be right back. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes, it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back, this is Footprint. We have two gentlemen here, and um, if you've been following, you have Air Marshal, Air Marshal. Ashley Larson, Wing Commander, Patrick Sawajo. So, working with a champion, how was it like? <laughs> now he, he, he was the head of state and the minister, uh, commissioner for defense at the time, and you now became the CDS. How was it like working with him? And who were the others that were part of it at the time? It was not easy working with Aika Champong for the, the simple reason that um, um, as we started trying to find our way through governance, you find that he had friends, officers who got commissioned like he had it, other ranks who were later on given commission, whom he would have wished to bring into government, but he couldn't bring them into government. But not being able to bring them to government didn't stop him from trying hard to make sure that they influence government decisions. Like who? Techi Mensin. The one who was running transport something? I don't yeah. know. We came here. Henry Techi Mensin. Yeah. Uh, Salifu. Ayensu. They were all majors and they later on rose to the Kenya. But these were people he hobnobbed with. He liked them very much. I know because sometimes when I go to his house in Burma camp to discuss, you find them sitting down with him. And then because he couldn't deal, give these chaps good jobs or make them influence, it was difficult for him to, for you to see clearly how he wants to get things done. Mm -hmm. So when you go to cabinet to discuss issues and you take cabinet decisions, we agree that we want to make a road from here to there, A to B, and you expect that the secretary to cabinet has got it and Pope want to give you the letter. The letter goes to Aikachan, he, he sits down on it because he wants his friends, his colleagues, to comment on it. So things don't come out the way you want to. Sometimes they change it to suit him and to suit themselves. These were the freaky problems he was having. And I think also he was having problems with the three majors who were later on promoted to Lieutenant Colonel, and I think full colonels in the end, Agbo, Ba, and Selome. You know, because um, um, those officers, the moment they knew that Aika Champon had made a coup and they were in government, if they saw a general coming to them because they are in government, they expect that being members of government, you, the general, should salute them. Really? <laughs> This guy has been to military academy I've, in Ghana, I've been to you, but this sort of thing we don't do. do. So, so I, were, I, 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 I ran government. into, I was coming out of a, 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 a champion's office with uh, uh, um, um, Techi Mensin one day, and I stopped and he had, was going ahead of me. But coming to come and say a champion was Tony Selome. And Tony Selome was coming, Tony uh, was going, Tony was full kennel, and Tony Selome was a major. 
and Tony met, to, when they met, Tony didn't salute Teti Manson. And Teti, right in my eyes, Teti Manson called him. What, what do you mean by this? You, a major, I am a Kenyan part, you didn't say, you know what they tell the guy? He's a minister. F unfortunately for him, Salome, I was there, I said, look, that stop that nonsense before me. I was yes, there with my uniform. Answer. Yes. <laughs> so stop that nonsense. This is Beba Camp. It's not your minister, and he's a Beba Camp. So you must give One him time. respect. You know, so I went and told Ayaka Chamundi, we must stop this nonsense. Tell your boys. Thank you. You know? So, but it was difficult for them to agree. This is part of the thing that makes it was impossible for them to stay in government. So, um, a friend of mine who used to be in, in, in the military system um, mentioned something to me when, um, you know, when, when he got to know that I was re related to the wife of Kojo Lee. And then he quickly said that, oh, this is who they were kicked out of the, of the, of the I military system. I kicked him out. Who? I kicked him out. Oh, you did that? This is not the dentist, Lee's son. Yes, yes, yeah, yes Robert Lee's out. son. You sacked him from the, uh, from the Air Force. Quick. Retired him. Oh, see, that's see, smart. It's all right, right from the beginning. Tried to put, because they, were, they, they said they were doing all the right flight, you know, going under some of these overhead bridges on the... With the aircraft. And it was a British man who saw him. But then he had come to prove to me what it was that was happening. So when the British man, who probably was a pilot, was working for some British firm in Ghana, called me as... as Where? At Akusombo? Uh, uh, no, called me as head of the Air Force at that time. Uh -huh. Said, this is what your boys are doing and what not and what not. Where were they doing this? It says, I think on the motor, you know the motorway had some of those things before? Oh, I see. The motorway had them. Am I right there, ma'am? That's a great. You know, but then... So they were flying? The, the he, came, he came to advise me, give a propound on what the thing was in those days. He said, what, can you were, help us with this? Who were made to practice landing on the motorway? But I said they would block a certain the part. of the motorway. Yeah. It was done because, assuming there was an uprising, and the army has surrounded the airport. To once the airport is surrounded, the planes can't take off. <coughs> but we, the jets, can take off and land. We are not too big on the motorway. But that was a sanctioned exercise. A sanctioned exercise. So w why did you suck? He was the boss. Was the he, I was the boss. He was doing unauthorized flying, dangerous. Flying. Dangerous flying. Yes. yes. So I, I called him and said, so, caution him? Or before, if you are charged, they will caution and tell you you are not so, suitable. <laughs> oh. So I told him, well, you have to leave and what not. But Jerry brought him back when Jerry came back into the seat. So at the time, that material moment when Jerry became head of state, Kujoli was officially not in the Air Force. He had been recalled. They recalled but officially, he had been given administrative discharge. Yes. See, the military can look at you and if you don't have those things and you're causing trouble. For mm. example, Brigadier Fifa was pending administrative discharge mm. because his character at the time at the time was not the one the military officer and gentleman what, what, what was he like? Oh Fifa will get drunk and start with and fire the prostitutes. <laughs> you know, we knew him like that. A good also academically was good. Yeah. But once so a little beer goes in, was a bit rascal. Okay. So okay. the army can anytime say that, look, you may be a disgrace to the service. They can give you administrative discharge. But you also had a, a, um, an encounter with Jerry Rollins with, okay. um, you know, you know the, a trip to, is it India or Pakistan? We won that where they come out. That's no, this is when he went for a course. He, he went to a course. He went for a yes. course to do... Yes. Um, um, Jerry, I, was, I, was I want this one to come out. Jerry, uh, he had gone out. out. He left. Jerry, having prepared and sent on a course in Pakistan. And because a course, if it's more than six months, at least you can get your four months pay, all inclusive. Then after that, the nearest high commission or embassy Will continue. But Jerry's going, he took all allowances due to him. <laughs> Car allowance, house allowance, uh, my, everything was given to him in a package and left. Now he got to Pakistan and uh, when he got there, he realized that the course he was going on had been postponed. 
Okay. And actually, when he contacted us through the High Commission for Pindi, he had won. Bannerman too had gone on the course, but you see, we have two different courses. One for abnisio instructor. That means you take the young man who hasn't flown before and then make him a pilot. And the other one, gunnery, you are taking already made pilot to teach him how to fight in the air on the ground. They are two, so we need two different temperaments. And Jerry was not suited to become a basic flight instructor because his relationship with the student may be a problem. But if he's a commission officer, we can work it out. So once the course was postponed, he had to come back. And if he came back, he must refund the money to the forces pay office. Then they can start paying him. You know. By the time he came back, the money had been squandered. <laughs> After how long? So for about three months, he wasn't going to be paid. No, how long did he stay out? He, he, you go to a course, you go to the base and they postpone it. I think the, the, the problem came from the higher commission. They have told us that course had been postponed. Mm. But they didn't inform us, so we sent him. So once he came back without the money, he needed to refund it. That's the time he <coughs> came to me to try and take money from my, my, my safe. That money is all mine. It belonged to the Air Force because at the time, sometimes when the planes take off, especially to other countries, so have what we call fuel connect. It's like credit card. That's why you use <coughs> buying fuel. <coughs> but some of the Francophone countries are special. Sometimes they didn't believe that Ghanaians flew the aircraft there. They were looking for a white man. White pilot. <laughs> so sometimes what we do is I will give them cash <laughs> to pay. If you don't buy the four, you can't fly. So he helped. He wanted of me to give him some money, and I said I couldn't do it because I was subject to checks anytime. So if I took the money and they came to check my accounts, I would be in trouble. But I gave my advice what could be done because he gave me some. Are you recording? No. Uh, so you sorted him out, basically. I was able to reduce mm -hmm. the amount he had to refund. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that if we zeroed it, somebody in the first OP would notice that there's something wrong. And the, the way we did it was that when he was coming back, he used train before he's doing it, the plane, he spent a night in the hotel, pay hotel bills, and all kinds of things to reduce how much you had to mm -hmm. refund. Mm -hmm. So we got to a point that we couldn't go below. And I believe that started his problems. Mm. Now if you need have cash on you, you can't buy petrol for your car, you can't feed. It's difficult. That's about it. Wow. That's about it. Now, <laughs> so you, at some point, fell out with Kutua Champo. Yes, I did, unfortunately. Yes. At which point? Well, um, 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 I was told or said, it was at a, at, at a, a, a meeting of the cabinet. Not even, even when you have also your regional commissioners involved, I think it was the government, let's say so. When somebody got up and told, said at the meeting that he said that the Avis are trying to overthrow the government. I think it was, he's dead now. Joe Feli. Yeah. Joe Feli. Yeah, he was also yeah. Was killed. Yeah. Killed, was killed by Rawlings. Yeah. Says he heard that the Avis are trying to overthrow the government. I sit there, I sit here next to him. So I say, yes, I've heard it too. And um, that he believed it. I said, Mr. I, you're joking. How, how, well, they were trying to, but he said, yes, that he believed it. 
and that it is the guy who has told him that the airways are trying to do it are from I, General Sheldon's old area, airway. It's an airway who told him that yes, this is your own countryman who predicts for me, who tells, you know, I, I believe in going to Bokosa and what not, Juju people too. I don't know Juju people's way, I don't know them. No, he goes to the Bukoma. To, 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 and so to they, 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 they told him that Ashley Larson, the chief I was. I said, he was telling him, but he insisted. Mr. Santa, his insistence, sir. And that was at that meeting that I got up, removed all my rank cap, put it on the big table. Bye bye, my friends, I walked out. And that's how I got out of the government. Okay, so I think this is where we end the story. This, as you but hear. But the story has to continue, it's long. That's though. what I'm saying. This, as you hear, will be published in a book that will be coming out very soon. We will announce to you when it's, it's, it's ready. <laughs> so, um, the life story and the. Uh, um, as told by himself, Air Marshal Ashley Larson, and with footnotes from Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo. This has been another episode of Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>